Some people have been asking if the blackout on board the container ship Dolly could have been the result of a cyber attack. Well, the quick answer is no. It's not a cyber attack. Less than two weeks after the Dolly incident in Baltimore, another ship lost propulsion as it was approaching a bridge in New York. On the evening of April 5, the container vessel APL Qingdao departed from the terminal in Staten Island, and as she was approaching the Verrazano Bridge, suffered a loss of propulsion. This happened about three kilometers away from the bridge's center span, and at the time, her speed slowed down to around four knots. Over the course of 15 minutes and 1.5 kilometers, she slowed to a near stop while being aided by tugboats. Shortly after the vessel regained propulsion and was assisted to safely anchor outside the navigable channel just north of the Verrazano Bridge. Eventually, the vessel was repaired and, of course, inspected by the U.S. Coast Guard. APL Qingdao heaved up her anchor and resumed her voyage on the morning of April 7. No other details were given as to why the main engine was out for a short time. However, the ship regained propulsion and within 15 minutes managed to come to a stop. This could have been any mechanical problem that resulted in either high temperatures or low pressures, which would have triggered the main engine to slow down or maybe an emergency trip. It did not lose electrical power like the Dali, so they managed to regain propulsion and they were assisted by tugs and eventually stopped the ship without further incident. Believe it or not, this happens quite a lot. It just doesn't make the headlines because for most of the incidents, only minor damages or sometimes even no damages happen at all. But two container ships in the span of two weeks lost propulsion as they were approaching bridges in the United States. How is that not a cyber attack? How is that not an attack on American shipping? Well, mainly because cargo ships are not remote controlled, meaning the bridge control console as well as the engine control console and other machinery controls are not connected to the internet or any radio or satellite control device or even network. Currently, the only systems that can possibly be attacked remotely either by hacking or jamming would be the AIS or Automatic Identification System, the GPS, and maybe the servers of container terminals in order to, you know, get shipping manifests. The only equipment on board that are usually connected to the internet are the computers used for sending emails, reports, and sometimes uh, CCTV. Some ships also send real-time data to the office like speed, heading, engine orders, and others for monitoring purposes. But other than that, there is no way to remotely control ships, much less hack them. But how about the PLCs? Maybe someone posing as a technician came on board for repairs and uploaded a program that would disable the generators at a certain time. Well, technicians only come on board after coordination with the office and only to work on specific machinery that is beyond the capability of the crew to fix. If unscheduled technicians suddenly appear uh, without proper coordination with the captain or chief engineer from the technical superintendents, they won't be allowed on board, much less start work. That happened to me once while in port. I got a call from the gangway watch that a technician was there and he wanted to speak to me about a certain piece of equipment. I said, what technician? I'm not expecting anyone, so don't let him in. So I got on the phone and called my technical superintendent in the office and asked him if he arranged someone for that machinery. And he said yes. So I asked him, why were we not informed? It turned out the email that he sent a few days ago did not come through. So I asked him to resend it together with the name and other details of the technician, as well as the scope of the job that he was supposed to do. We allowed him to come in only after confirming his identity, as well as the email exchange between him and our superintendent. While he was doing his job, I also assigned one engineer to assist him and be with him at all times while in the engine room. So no, it's not easy to have someone pose as a technician and physically come on board and upload viruses or tinker with machinery and other equipment. 
And once again, no. Ship machinery is not centralized, meaning you have to operate them using their own panels. Cargo ships today, in terms of network systems, are comparable to the Battlestar Galactica. You can't control or disable them wirelessly or from a single console. Well, for now, at least. That's because in recent years, there has been a push towards making ships autonomous. Now, what does that mean? Does autonomous mean unmanned? No people, no crew on board to operate the ship, like driverless cars? Well, yes, kind of, but not quite. The International Maritime Organization, or IMO, has begun working on an instrument to regulate the operation of maritime autonomous surface ships, or MASS. Their end game is to develop a mandatory MASS code expected to enter into force on January 1st, 2028. MASS refers to a ship that can operate independently of human interaction. However, they have defined four degrees of automation, and they are distinguished as follows. Degree 1, ship with automated processes and decision support. This means that there are crew on board to operate and control shipboard systems and functions. Some operations may be automated and at times be unsupervised, but with seafarers on board ready to take control. This degree is not really very concerning as it is pretty much almost what we have today for the newer ships. Lots of automated processes and a reduced crew complement, but still with people on board who run the ship. Degree 2. Remotely controlled ship with seafarers on board. The ship is controlled and operated from another location. However, seafarers are still available on board to take control and operate the systems and functions. This degree of autonomy is actually already in use today, although still limited to short-range and smaller vessels. They are controlled by operators in remote control centers. There would still be some remaining crew on board for operations like maneuvering, mooring, and maybe cargo handling. Degree 3. Remotely controlled ship without seafarers on board. The ship is unmanned and controlled and operated from another location. This is very similar to Degree 2, except there will be no crew on board. All operations and monitoring will be carried out from the remote control centers. Vessels of this type will also need to use robotics for certain operations. Degree 4. Fully Autonomous Ship the operating system of the ship is able to make decisions and determine actions by itself. Now this is the highest level of automation. In this degree, the ship basically has an AI that will have complete control over all of its operations. So far, there are ships that fall within degrees 2 and 3. Most notable would be the container vessel Yara Birkland, which was designed to be autonomous. They plan to gradually remove all crew on board after extensive trials have been completed. In the last article I read, the chief engineer will soon disembark and start working from the shore control center. They have also been testing the robotic arms for mooring operations, and once that's perfected, another two crew members will be removed. Eventually, their aim is for the ship to operate autonomously and without human intervention. Automation in the maritime sector has always been a prickly issue, with ship owners and operators wanting to reduce the number of crew on board, with some even claiming that the elimination of the human element might significantly reduce the occurrence of human error. However, it could also expose the ship to other risks and threats, such as power failures and cyber attacks. In any case, most predictions are that autonomous or semi-autonomous operations will be limited to short voyages, for example, from one specific port to another, across only a short distance. There are also legal implications, most notably for developing countries, which account for over 80% of flag states and are among the major seafarer supplying jurisdictions. It would be a challenge to get those countries to ratify any regulation that will hurt their economy. Another thing is if countries would even allow autonomous or remote-controlled vessels to enter and operate within their territorial waters. 
So the technology might already be here and will improve as time goes by. But without a legal framework to govern the operation of autonomous vessels, it may take a lot more time before we see unmanned ships entering foreign ports. And when that happens, if some incidents happen in the future and people allege that they were caused by cyber attacks, I'm not going to rule that out. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.